Yes, yes, people. Welcome back to another transfer roundup. And as predicted, Euro New Euro is now finished. So there's going to be big transfer news coming in the next couple of weeks. I think City will be looking to start to make their moves. I think a lot of clubs will be doing that. Now all the players will be returning back from the Euros. Obviously, we're going to go into pre-season. No real signings as of yet. I mean, the first little bit of news straight in there is Savio is apparently going to get announced on Wednesday, which is exciting. Like a proper unveiling of uh, Savio. Looking forward to seeing what shirt number um, Savio gets and hopefully see him uh, do bits on the pre-season. Um, I'm looking forward to it, man. He's, a, he's our first signing. Hopefully not our only signing because that's some rumours that we're kind of happy to go into the season with the current squad. Uh, plus Savio. Now, it, a lot of it is depending on Pep Guardiola and what he does um, with the players that we've currently got, outgoings and stuff like that, but we'll get into that right now. But first, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. There's good big Julian Alvarez news today. That's uh, today's hot topic is Julian Alvarez leaving Manchester City, so we'll get into that a bit later on, so uh, stay tuned. First things first, speaking of Pep Guardiola, apparently Indy Football are saying that the Football Association would consider the idea of appointing an interim uh, in order to try and coax Pep Guardiola as England manager if he does decide Side to leave Man City in 2025. Now I'm hoping, I think we're all hoping that Pep will do, uh, will sign the next extension. Uh, I'd love him as the England manager. I've said this a lot of times now. He, he'd, he'd do bits with that team. The attacking talent that we've got, the football that we could play with Pep Guardiola as manager. Obviously the Euros didn't go too well for uh, for us lot, but it is what it is. It's over now. I can, uh, I can I can move on with my life and get back to club football. Club over country all the time now that Euros is done. Um, um, but on Pep still, Jamie Jackson has come out. He's a good, decent source. Says um, Pep's expected to, to decide that his Man City future between December and February um, of next season. Guardiola remains unsure until he's minded to take the decision midway through the season. Um, I think Pep's probably in a place right now where he doesn't really know where, what to do yet. Um, I don't think he's fully set on a decision. That's just my opinion. Uh, not fact. I don't think he's fully set on a decision on what he wants to do. I personally think he'll sign an, ext an extension, whether that be one year or a bit further, maybe two years. I'd love that. Signing him one year with a rolling, a rolling contract. It'd just be nice for the two years so we don't have to keep going through this kind of scenario that we're in now every single season until he does leave. I know that we're kind of on the brink of the end of Pep Guardiola's time at Manchester City. You can kind of see, uh, do you know what I mean? It's shorter deals and I just, I don't know, the longevity I don't feel is there. Uh, but... A couple more years with Pep, I'll take it any day of the week. You know what I mean? I just, but I, I just want to know. I just want to know for sure. But looking like we're gonna have to wait a little bit to get that information. Uh, next up. Joshua Kimmich, a player that a lot of us want to sign for Manchester City, available for around 30 to 40 million euros, which we say all the time, I think is a very, very good price for Kimmich. Now, on this, as of now, City target uh, Joshua Kimmich wants to complete his Bayern Munich contract until 2025. So that's more looking like, obviously, Pep could be leaving in that season. Um... It's not ideal. Obviously, we want to make these moves now. Rodri going into next season and not getting any rest stinks. Don't like the idea of that in the slightest. The guy is overworked, and I don't know how, how much longer Rodri can continue playing 60-game seasons and then having international competitions in between that. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy now, right now for Rodri. I think he'd like a backup. Uh, I'm still holding out hope for Bruno G. Um, do I mean, I'm hoping there's a little bit, a little bit in there, but... It's looking likely, or, or there's rumours now that Kimmich to stay at Bayern until 2025. I'd still, if I was City, be testing that. I'd be straight in testing that and seeing uh, seeing the resolve of Bayern and, and Kimmich himself because I think Kimmich at City is a perfect fit. Uh, next up, Edison. Someone that we've been speaking about so much in this transfer window so far. We know that Edison's been open to a move to Al Nasser. We know that there's big money on the table, 60 million euro for the course of two seasons. That's a lot of money. Um, but the price that Al Nasser are currently offering is not um, not in the range of what City wants. So as it currently stands, according to Fabrizio Romano, and negotiations are currently off. A 30 million euro bid was rejected uh, and basically City came back with 60 million euro and we can talk. Now, I agree with what City are doing. 60 million euro, 
I mean, if Edison just says he wants to leave, I can understand City going in with 60 million euro. Personally, I still think it's a little bit cheap, but I could just be biased towards that. I think Edison is a very important player to Manchester City. Um, obviously, going in the season with Ortega as a backup, we're very fortunate to have Ortega, but I don't know. Edison's still my number one as it stands. So, I don't know. At 30 million euro, I think is is a piss take, if I'm honest. I, I, that's, that's a joke of an offer. Uh, you need to be paying the cash. The big cash, if you want one of the best goalkeepers in world football. Um, Al Nasser apparently have now turned to Atletico Paranaense's Bento as their alternative option to Edison. So Edison might not be getting that move, not based on him wanting to stay, but more based on that Al Nasser don't want to pay the cash that we want him to pay. Um, more news on some other players. I'm loaning is Callum Doyle um, has gone on loan to Norwich. There's no option to buy for Norwich, um, but the championship side are paying a loan fee. Uh, I like Callum Doyle. I think he's a good player. I think he's got a lot of talent. I know a lot of people uh, kind of likened him to Laporte a few years back. Um, I'm hoping he does well. It's just, he's in an unfortunate place where centre-backs at our football club aren't going to get in, really, because of all the centre-backs we've got. Five centre-backs are all absolutely quality. Kanji, RK, even them two are, are, are sick for us. So it's, it's hard for centre-backs to get into side. I don't think they really get the game time that they need. So Callum Doyle getting another long move. I'm all for that. Um, now... Julian Alvarez news. Now, I thought there'd be no chance of us selling Julian Alvarez, but today it's blowing up. Uh, CL Merlo is saying that Atletico Madrid are now advancing for Julian Alvarez. There are already negotiations in place. The striker's willing to leave Man City as he wants a greater role. Now, this is something that I was concerned about last season as we kept seeing Julian Alvarez dropping a little bit deeper, playing a little bit more of like a false nine kind of role. Sometimes he'd be stood in, uh, sat next to Kev in midfield. Um, you've seen him come on sometimes and play left wing. Uh, it's just difficult when you've got someone like Erling Haaland up top, but some, some of our best football has been played with Julian Alvarez up top. I know when Haaland uh, got injured, we played Julian Alvarez, went more back to a false 90 kind of system with Julian Alvarez in there, and it worked. Um, I know for a part, for a period of the season, he didn't have the best time, Julian Alvarez, but at the beginning of the season, he was very, very important to us. Um, I really don't want to see him go. He's got so much talent, but there's the other side of the coin, which I can firmly understand that he... He deserves to be a, a starter, a week in, week out, a greater role, as as we just said there. I think he he will probably be chasing that, and he's probably looking at Erling Haaland and thinking, well, I'm not going to get that role whilst this big guy is still here. Uh, there's more news on this. Rodrigo Fez um, from ESPN is saying that uh, Julian Alvarez is Atletico Madrid's first choice to replace Alvaro Barata, who's just left. Uh, the Man City striker wants more playing time, and the Liga club are happy to make him one of the pillars of Diego Simeone's new project. So they're really pushing for this. Um... There's more again. Atletico Madrid are aware um, that City will not make things easy for them. So not ruling out a loan deal for Julian Alvarez in the case that they can't sign him on a permanent deal. I think if we were to sign him, we'd need to get a buyback in there or at least first refusal. I think Tommy said this as well on Twitter. He's come out and said a first refusal for Julian Alvarez is probably ideal in case he does go on and do bits. Now, Tommy, again, still on Tommy, he says, Alvarez could be the biggest name to leave uh, City this window. Atletico are really serious about the player, and he do and, and he fancies it. If they get anywhere near £80 million, the wheels may turn quickly. Madrid ticks a lot of boxes in terms of size, lifestyle, and wanted starts. Julian Alvarez would start a lot for Atletico Madrid, and that's no doubt. He would do bits. And I think, to be fair, he'd start for a lot of teams in the world. And as I said, then it's just unfortunate. He's got Erling Haaland in front of him. Now... I really, really don't want to lose Julian Alvarez. I think he's a great option for us to have, um, especially we know Erling Haaland's Erling Haaland injury record isn't the best in the world. I don't think we can slam Erling Haaland every single game. Um, but I'm really not liking the way this is going. Um, it's more the side of it that I keep seeing that he's willing to go and wants a greater role because I can understand it. I get it. I, I like the, Just like with the Edison and Al Nasser, £60 million over two seasons is won everything he can at Manchester City. I kind of get it. I kind of get why Edison might be looking at that and going, that's tempting, that. £60 million over two years is an in insane amount of cash. Now, I, it's not the same scenario for Julian Alvarez. It's more based on starts. And I think he'd get that at Atletico. And if that's what he's wanted, then 
we could be looking at Julian Alvarez leaving Man City this window, which is not good. But my question to you lot to leave in the comment section below is, Julian Alvarez leaving Man City, first thing, who's your replacement? Because we need to go get someone. We, we can't just ham out Erling Haaland. What is your replacement for Julian Alvarez? What striker would you go and get? Again, we're st stuck in this position of it's harder to sign the backup. What would be your backup striker that City go and get? And also, what price would you put on Julian Alvarez because I mean Tom is saying around 80 million pound I think I could probably see that around 80 million I think City would be pushing for that pushing a bit further man like the talent that he's got is so young mate I think uh, it's heavy it's heavy to lose you lose your players like especially star players man it's giving me Leroy Sane vibes but let me know in the comment section below your replacement for Alvarez and the price you put on Alvarez big up to everyone I'll see you in the morning for a live stream about all this transfer news big up See you in a bit.